In August, Porsche made the news with a new high-performance hydrogen project. Their goal is developing a hydrogen-powered engine for use in sports cars or high-performing SUVs. Now, most companies working on hydrogen internal combustion engines are more focused on making efficient engines that can replace our day-to-day -day cars. Not Porsche. Porsche wants to build an engine that can be used in their upper-scale performance vehicles. You see, Porsche is working on a 4.4-liter twin-turbocharged V8, which in theory will produce 590 horsepower. That's over 130 horsepower per liter, which is some proper performance figures. And this is really impressive. You see, manufacturers have some serious challenges with hydrogen. Although hydrogen contains nearly four times more energy by weight than petrol, it's a gas, so its volumetric efficiency is a lot less. In simpler terms, hydrogen is more energy dense per kilogram, but takes up more space per energy unit. And there's another problem they have to deal with. Hydrogen has relatively low ignition energy requirements. Which is great when you want to build a fuel efficient vehicle, but for performance applications, it causes some problems. You see, this low ignition energy means that as combustion temperature rises, the chances of pre ignition or knock also rises, and knock is bad. Knock is very bad. So, how did Porsche develop a high performing engine using hydrogen as a fuel source? Well, as I stated previously, hydrogen takes up more space in your combustion chamber, meaning that there is less space for air in the chamber. So what is the obvious answer? Boost. Forcing more air into the chamber. You see, with any engine, the amount of fuel an engine can burn depends on the quantity of oxygen it can draw in. Pressurizing the air intake with a compressor, like a turbo or a supercharger, enables it to generate more power. And the same goes for hydrogen. Well, sort of. You see, for Porsche to get the same power from its simulated V8 when it's running on hydrogen instead of petrol, it needed turbochargers that outperformed your average turbo system. The turbo system needed to deliver around twice the amount of air by weight of normal production petrol engine turbochargers. So they looked into Formula 1. Similar to the Mercedes-AMG Project 1, this engine utilizes electrically boosted turbochargers. But to find the right combination, the engineers simulated four different layouts using electrically assisted turbos. They ran each setup through many tests and simulations and ended up with a really interesting system. And I'm sure it's unlike anything you have seen before. So each bank of the V8 has its own electric turbo. Now like I said, this is Formula 1 technology. And an electric turbo has an electric motor, which can spin the turbo shaft in places where the engine doesn't produce enough exhaust gas to spool up the turbo. This way there is no turbo lag. But you see, what makes this system different is the fact that it has two compressor wheels per turbo. This is how the turbo looks, and let me explain how it works. So, it looks kind of simple, but it's actually quite a complex way of getting air into the engine. Inlet air is pressurized by one of the compressors first, then it passes through the intercooler and then through the second compressor, from which it gets forced into the intake. Now, according to Porsche, with this setup, they were able to create a hydrogen-powered engine that produced around the same power as its gasoline counterpart. This is really cool, but unfortunately, as of now, there is no plans for production. But the work shows that this is a technology that they are interested in pursuing, so I am excited to see what comes from the German performance manufacturer in the future. And I'm quite curious to see exactly how this turbo compares to a normal turbo. I mean, I've never seen a turbo that pushes air to an intercooler and back into the turbo. Won't it kind of like counteract the effect of the intercooler because the turbo gets really hot with the exhaust gases. So I'm really curious to see how it works, how it affects the air temps and everything. Um, and yeah, anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I make a lot of stuff on cars, so if you like cars, this is the place to be. Um, and I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, I.